Love a good steel target. There's some of my favorite types of targets to shoot at the range. Paper has its purpose as well. Love shooting paper. But TCRT came out with allegedly the world's most durable rubber targets. Not only that though, they have some very unique stand setups. So I know the guys over there, they sent me a whole box of goodies to try out. Let's set some of these up, take a look. I have in the rack stand, in the tree stand, the tree stand I'm very intrigued about because I've always wanted a kind of a dueling tree, but I don't wanna lug it back and forth to the range. So this right here is how you build it. So you're gonna need the instructions right here. As per the instructions, you're going to need some pre-cut one by twos. I went ahead and labeled with the inches as well as the lettering that is in the instructions. So once you do this, it's gonna be kind of just muscle memory, just you know where things go, bring it to the range, the wood, and you'll need one more collection of things to get this done. You'll need all of the rubber targets. I'll just get a silhouette here. They come with a whole bunch of targets you can choose from. Here's a bunch right here. They say they're durable, so we'll just test that out. And here is the bread and butter, really. The rack system pieces right here. And this looks like to be part of the dueling tree. Kind of see which ways they go. You can twist and tighten up the bolts and you'll probably want some screws to hang. Cause I don't think I saw screws in here. You want some screws to hang the different gongs, however placement you'd like. All made in the USA as well, which is obviously great to see. It's like building a Lego, man. 90s simpler days i tell you so you have this piece right here three sides put all the d's in there that's what she said <laughs> i pre-loosened all the bolts now you can just hand tighten them down just like so a bigger wrench if you want to but yeah i don't think you need to crank her down too much right here I mean, that's gonna be sturdy, honestly, especially because you're just hitting rubber. You know, don't have any kind of weight or too much weight really up top. Tall C going right in here. Two bolts on that one. You have all these little cross members here. One, two, three, four, and the top five right here. And you can actually pre-loosen all of the bolts if you like. Just keep them loose for the next time you go to the range. They work pretty well. I mean, I just hand tighten this down and you can do the cross member and this is not going anywhere. I need to tighten those down there. But just slide kind of where you want them really. Once you get these cranked in, if you want to crank them down real tight, you can just pull out this whole C stick right here and just leave the hangers installed where you want. And then you can just pull out the feet It'd be a pretty easy setup where you don't really have to need to remember all of the lettering on where the wood actually goes. All right, so E, tighten down, E, and you could probably just put these however you want. But I figured just follow the instructions the first time, what they suggest. Another E up top here, and then up top is a D. There's your dueling tree stand set up. So now we can take some screws or nails, really, whatever you want to hold up the gongs that come with it. Also the other four pieces, it's like two of these and two of these. They're all for that stand for the silhouette. So we'll do that here next. So this multi-pack doesn't come with screws, but I noticed it comes with zip ties. Now that makes sense because you can zip tie these just straight around some of the wood. Now the problem is, if you're like me, you go back and forth to the range. I don't know if zip tying these is gonna be your best bet, just because you have to cut a bunch of zip ties and it's a lot of zip ties. So I'll probably go pop some screws through there. But this multi-pack, comes with all sorts of nice sizes. I just brought some like cheap, like one inch screws, just basic wood screws really. And I'm wondering if, if these get banged around enough, I can actually pull these off and actually reuse the screws and not have to pull them out every time. Cause that's nice too, but I like that already. You want me to see some nice swinging on that target? Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, it looks pretty good. Nice and solid. The options are really endless with a tree stand or with any kind of cross stand. Like you don't have to use that silhouette if you don't want to. You can hang a bunch of gongs along a strand of wood, right? And not only that, I was thinking actually instead of screws, now that I'm looking at it, what if I get some of those hooks? Little just screw in hooks, not the eye ones, but you know, the ones with the open end. Just some screw in hooks, little C hooks, and you can always just hang them on and they probably won't go anywhere. There's probably gonna be very minimal swinging anyways, hitting these, just cause that's how rubber is when you're shooting at it. So I think to properly test out this new rack system, we should try starting with something small and just easy to digest. Like a bunch of 5.56 through my new PSA AK-101. She really is beautiful. Just picked her up. But how did this gong hold up? Let's see, put in the light there. Well, you can see, I mean, it's a nice pattern there. All the rounds hit all over that gong and there's no real tears or just a bunch of tiny holes. It's a nice kind of self-healing gong. There's a little crack here. But overall, held up pretty well. Some dagger action, about five yards, which is again, one of the perks of having rubber targets like this. The white, you can definitely see a little better than the black but they both swing, so you can definitely tell. Am I hitting it? Yes. Can I see where I hit? Eh, that's when you paint them, right? My upgraded AP5P, essentially an MP5K, made by MKE. This one I might do an update video on because, although I love it, there are some wearing issues that are happening that you're going to need to go to HK Parts for and to upgrade some of the parts, and I might upgrade those parts and show you what's happening. Like that. <laughs> it's not like an extractor issue. For fun, a little Beretta cheetah action in 380. How's your guys' day going? Kids woke me up this morning, they're like, I want pancakes, can I get a little cheese omelet? Can I get some strawberries? A little dash of fruit snacks in there. And I was like, sure, why not, you know? Learn to cook, guys, I tell you. Get a lot of brownie points along the way. Friends, family, wives, whatever. That was bird shot. <laughs> I was gonna shoot the slug, but I think bird shot is not rated, and that's why we have extras. So now you know. Honestly, it wasn't even the bird shot, let's be real, it's probably the wad flying right out. Yeah, I could probably slave this slug. These are getting expensive, but anyways, put it a slug, it'd probably just blow a bigger hole. Which honestly, you're right, no, you're right. You're right, we need to find out for science. Hey, you pop it off the screw. What do you think? It's fine, right? We could probably just, you know. I had to do it, I had to test it out. How far away with bird do we have to be for the wad to not follow the trajectory of the shot? I don't know, over 10 yards. I'm gonna try this one more time. So let's see, the bird shot obviously gonna be absorbed, but can we get that wad to get out of there? I don't know. 10 yards. That looked better. I'm going to level with you guys. I don't think it did any better. 
I think I just hit the exact same spot with that wad because if you look at it, it's even bigger than it was and it's more squared. So something hit it enough. And if I did miss the wad, maybe the bird shot just blew out more chunks. We can see all of the little bird shot pellets right there. So again, not really ready for shotgun, but we had to test it out. So it's all about testing the limitations of the rubber. Clearly it's gonna hold up to 5.56, five, it's gonna hold up to nine millimeter, 22 bird shot. I think that wad's gonna mess it up quite a bit. Obviously buckshot, plugs, things like that. What about something different? So 5.56 is screaming fast, right? And it's small, right? What about 7.62 by 39 through this Zastava ZPAP M70? Beautiful rifle, super accurate, a lot of fun to shoot. Let's do 10 rounds on this little guy. Also this whole thing turned <laughs> from the shotgun blasts. Let's do 10 rounds on this guy right here. I wanna be curious what a little bit bigger of a round will do. All right, we can count together here, all right? Here we go. Ten-ish, Baker's dozen. I actually like the screw setup. I think the hook will be really good too. It's because you can pop these on and off, and then I can just pull all of these sticks out bring them to the range, set them up how I'd like. There you go, there's all the rounds. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I mean, really, see the sun there. Yeah, holds up fine. I mean, even at that close range, like, and you can't push your finger through, right? Yeah. Now I can hear you through the screen saying, oh, bring out something from World War I. <laughs> this is a 30 odd six M1903 Springfield from 1919. This one's kind of cool. So it was a US military issued rifle, 30 odd six, five round internal magazine. All right, has an on off switch, which essentially when it's on, means you can load when there's a round in there from the internal box mag or you can flip it off. And now you have a single shot bolt action for whatever reason, if you wanna top off whatever you wanna do. That's a fascinating piece of US military history. And of course, we need to study how these 30-06 rounds do for such an interesting rubber target. And they have a little strip clips right there. So let's see how it does on this little guy over here, shall we? For science. That threw this stand around quite a bit. Really just loosened up the bolts it looks like. Tighten her down, there you go. Come here. All right, so obviously 30 odd six, heavy hitting round, right? USA, you kind of see what it does there, a little bit of a hole, stretch it out. So it will take a chunk, much like the shotgun there. Should I set up the silhouette? Let's do it. The Stoger STR9MC, running some uh, frangible stuff, just pretty much picked up a case of whatever was on sale the cheapest, has the new Burris Fast Fire C on top there. I like the silhouette. I think I could have flattened it a little bit more, but we're shooting at it, so who really cares about a little bit of wrinkles, right? Yep. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video and some of the testing we did on the TCRT rubber targets. I really like them. I think they hold up pretty well. I mean, the silhouette is fun. You could probably even cut it out if you want to make it more realistic. You don't even have to have all the extra edges. And of course, you do need to fill in some of the color if you want to shoot at distance, kind of see the A, B, C, D, A, all that good stuff. But they work pretty well. They, they hold up to what at least they're rated for. And then you go above and beyond that, you're going to be tearing up your rubber targets pretty quickly. So again, links down below if you want to check them out. Gear 10, 50, 10%. Get some, 
mess around with some of the settings on how you want to set these up and then what do you want to use for different brackets and I think even this way right here with a long piece on top braced where you could hang probably like six or seven gongs along the whole top that could be really cool just to have different sizes again for different training purposes also this AK-101 is amazing such a flat shooter all right well hey again thanks so much for watching take care hit that subscribe button See you in the next review.